go deeper into that layer in the later session today. And um, we can manage or, um, or uh, we can monitor our wing access points and we can configure our cloud access points in the uh, cloud IQ. And we have some software for VPN connections and um, last, but, last but not least, we have our cloud management next solution A3. So cloud IQ is only management and uh, all the uh, information and all the um, configuration is on the devices itself. So it's important to know that our cloud, um, Exim Cloud IQ is cloud platform agnostic. Now this means that our solution can run in Amazon Web Services, in Google Cloud, and also uh, soon in Microsoft Azure. So at this moment, we have three data centers in Europe and uh, 15, all, 15 all over the world. So in Europe, the data centers are in Sweden, in Frankfurt, and in Ireland. And based on your location, you will be assigned to one of the, those data centers. So for example, when you are located in Germany, uh, and you create a public Cloud IQ account, your Cloud IQ account is hosted in Frankfurt. So this is an important one. Security is our first priority. Um, so we are the first and only cloud management networking vendor that um, have their uh, ISO 27001 certification for our network management system. So that means there's not only the cloud providers, such as Google or AWS or Azure, but uh, also Extreme Cloud IQ is um, ISO certified. And you can download the ISO certification uh, from uh, Cloud IQ, and I will show you later on during the demo. So next to that, we offer our customers uh, GDPR tools um, to remove and download client data. So we can, um, we can uh, download uh, and remove the client data to assist customers and partners in addressing their rights to um, request and rights to forget. And I will also show you that later during the demo. And, um, so we can search downloading and deleting personal data and uh, as well as logging these activities. And we, can, and, and we can generate GDPR audit reports. So when we look at the deployment options, we have three deployment options. And the first one is the public cloud, and that's in, uh, in our data centers. And um, we have the uh, private cloud, that's a copy of the public cloud running in your own data center. And that's especially for customers with large scale requirements above the 5,000 devices. And uh, it can scale up to, up to 1 million devices. And we have a local cloud offering and that gives you the possibility to run XIQ on VMware on the customer side in the local uh, environment. So there are some small differences between these solutions. So the public cloud is um, updated in real time and the, uh, it's infinitely scalable. So you can start with one AP and grow to thousands of APs and devices uh, in the same um, Cloud IQ instance. And the, uh, for example, the local cloud is only scalable to 5,000 devices. Um, one important thing is that the license are portable. So when you, have, you are a new cli client customer, uh, you can start with um, the local cloud, for example. And when your requirements change, you can move to the public cloud with the same license. So the um, access points, the devices, the access points and the switches and the routers, they are communicating um, over CapWAP to the Cloud IQ. That's only management traffic. Um, and um, if it's not possible to uh, use CapWAP because it's blocked by the firewall, then it will use um, port 443 and port 80 for management traffic and firmware updates. All the other traffic, um, like the control um, plane and the data plane, it's on the APs itself. And we use RATSEC um, for uh, PPSK, cloud hosted PPSKs, and we will talk about that later. 
So we've seen the Extreme Cloud IQ. Let's have a look at the um, distributed control for the access points. Extreme Cloud IQ offer you a centralized configuration for AP, um, AP update, AP planning. So we have a built-in planning tool. Uh, we have uh, monitoring capabilities, dashboards, analytics, and troubleshooting tools. And um, it's important to know that the Extreme Cloud IQ is only management. So we don't have any centralized controller. No, there is no controller in the cloud. There is no controller in one of the APs and there is no virtual controller. So the um, Extreme Cloud IQ is only management and the only traffic that goes from the APs to the Cloud IQ is management traffic. No control or no data. With that said, we can grow from one AP to thousands of APs within the same architecture. And uh, we can start with one office and go to thousands of offices, also the same architecture. We have flexible um, software updates, so you can update one AP at a time or any other number of APs at a time at any location. And um, you can mix and match different types of APs with different software version in the same network. So for example, you can have an old AP120, which is an 802.11 N access point in the same network as the newest AP305C, which is an, an uh, 802.11 AX access point. So the AP is performing all major functions. Um, we have a built-in layer seven firewall in every single access point. That means you can block traffic at the edge of the network. So for example, we can block BitTorrent and Microsoft updates on the APs and that traffic will never reach to the firewall. So um, with the application detection, we uh, can detect over almost 2000 of uh, applications and you can add custom applications as well. So some other functions, uh, major functions um, are OS fingerprinting, fast and secure roaming. We will talk about that later, later on. The AP can be a radius server, the AP can be a radius proxy or DHCP server. So all the major functions are on the access points. And we have um, a, diff, uh, a few protocols running on the APs. So five co cooperative control protocols. And the first one is AMRP. And the AP cooper cooperate with neighbor APs um, to support control functions. So like radio resource management, layer two, layer three roaming, client load balancing, uh, wireless mesh networking. And this eliminates the need of a controller. And the cooperative control is, pos is made possible with the following protocols. So first AMRP, and that protocol is for layer two and layer three roaming, uh, load balancing, band steering. Um, also the authentication of the layer two G returning and keep, al keep alive. The next one is a relative new protocol. It's um, the ANXP and it's a, a protocol used by private client groups. And we will talk about it later. So we have the INXP and that's for geo-returning for guests. So when you have, uh, you can um, place a VGVA, so VPN gateway or an access point in a DMZ and you can tunnel all the guest traffic to that access point or to the VGVA um, and uh, it will never reach your local network and do uh, go to the internet from that AP. So two other protocols are DNXP, and that's for layer three roaming. Um, so, and that creates tunnels um, between APs in different subnets. So it gives the clients the ability to seamless roam between subnets. And maybe the most important one is ACSP, and that's for the auto um, channel and selection protocol for your radio channels and power management. And the APs use ACSP to um, analyze the RF environment and to make use of the best channel and power settings for wireless access points.
So how does it work? So we have some switches. We have an access point and all the enterprise features are on the access points. So we have context-based security. We have the application firewall, um, SLAs, uh, quality of service settings. We will add more access points. And here is ACSP. It will tune the RF environment and change the channels if needed for the access points. Then we have a client connected to one of the APs. And you see um, the APs will share their, the client information with the neighbor APs. And um, it will forward how we call it the PMK, the pairwise master key to the next neighbor. And the PMK is an encrypted key with the roaming cache information. So with that, the client can roam from AP, seamless roam from AP to AP. Um, so when one of the APs uh, lose their uh, network connectivity and is not powered uh, via power of Ethernet, then it will automatically uh, mesh to the next neighbor AP to create a um, wireless backhaul. And once it's back, it will always choose the fastest path to, to the outside world. And with that, the client can roam to another AP and the PMK key will share with the neighbor APs. And that's the AMRP protocol. So the cloud access points have the shared control plane, what increases speed, the resiliency in the scale. And um, with that, there's no need for a central controller. And we can start with one AP and we can grow to uh, millions of AP within the same uh, network. So yeah, let's see. Yes, sure. No, this is curious. Um, I will interrupt uh, you guys from time to time because I have this beautiful um, toy that I, <laughs> I want to play around, which is called Poles. So I, I think it's time to run the first one. So guys, I will be running a poll, which means that you will get a question popping up in your windows and you will have some time to answer it live. Um, um, I, I think that all of the questions are going to be multiple choice. So just pick the or a single choice. Yeah, okay, so they can be both. Uh, so pick the right answer and uh, press submit. Okay, so let me try. Yeah, so sorry for interruption, but you know, I, I love this tool. Yeah, okay, Manoa, thank you. Please go ahead. Okay, thank you. So um, we have seen the extreme cloud IQ and um, the distributed control architecture. Let's have a look at the license tiers. We will start with the Connect, that's the um, subscription-free cloud management. And it enables the organization to deploy an enterprise-grade connectivity with basic network management. So um, for um, customers or organizations that require enhanced policy, enforcement, uh, feasibility, monitoring tools, um, reporting, and some advanced configuration. Then you can seamlessly upgrade to Extreme Pilot. So you can start with Connect and you can upgrade to Pilot. And um, coming soon, we will have some more tires. And that's the first one is the um, Copilot. And that unlo unlocks uh, additional machine learning tools, some multi-cloud support, uh, self-remediation, and um, automated configuration and software management. And on top of that, we have Autopilot, where we introduce the AI technologies to uh, further optimize network performance, like AI uh, WIPs, AI anomaly detection, and um, that kind of tools. So, um, Extreme Connect is only available, available in the public cloud and you have only uh, community support. And some key features are you can do auto provisioning. We have the Wi-Fi planner. We have um, the guided configuration. You can build a guest network. You can um, use your uh, radius authentication. You can manage the um, access points and the switches from the former error access point, the cloud access point, and the 
arrow arc switches, but also the axles and the, uh, the wing access points, axle switches, for switch, and the wing access points. And when you want to do some branch routing or you um, want to use private preset key or the application firewall, then you need the pilot license. So let's switch over to my connect account. So this is the Extreme Cloud that you connect and um, you can see your access points. You see some grayed out menus and um, you can monitor your access points, switches, routers, you can configure them. You can do the device configuration, um, some interface settings, you can change the wireless interface settings. You can use the APS client mode or you can configure the backhaul mesh link. So you can do some uh, basic configurations. You can create uh, a network policy. You can create your SSIDs, but limited. So I will show you. You can create a um, SSID with a, a personal WPA password. So extreme one, two, three, for example, you can create a SSID, extreme test. But you cannot use private preset key or you cannot use web or your, uh, and you only can use an, an open network with some captive web portal, some guest network with the user policy. You can use the um, personal, WPA personal, and you can use the enterprise network. Um, so radius authentication with a radius server, you can configure it here. But you can only use one single user profile um, in the configuration. So you cannot, for example, in a school, you cannot uh, use range attributes to configure the uh, students and the teachers in the same SSID, but with different VLANs, with different quality of service settings and firewall settings. That's not possible in Connect. You need to um, upgrade to Pilot for that. So we have some device templates. You can configure your APs, your switches. Switch templates, you can configure your, uh, for example, your switch ports, export string ports, your port settings. And once we've done that, you can configure the end DNS. But the um, layer two IPsec VPN is not possible to configure process analytics to see how many um, customers are in my shop. Read to analytics is not possible. Um, and um, security the, um, options like WIPs is not in connect. So once you've done that, you can update your access point and you can manage it from there. So you can see your access point, you can see your clients, but not in depth. You cannot see um, the status of the clients. Um, the client 360, I will talk about it later. It's not possible, network 360. But we have a planning tool built in to plan your device, to view your heat maps. That's all um, in Connect. So that's the Extreme Cloud Cube Connect. Let's switch over to the pilot version then. And then you see the, the difference. So in the pilot, we start in the dashboard and here we see the top applications, the top users. And we can um, dive into the top users to see when they are connected um, over time. So live and historical information. We can see the most uh, users top sessions view. So the top usage, um, the uh, average or RSSI. Some deep dive information. And we can see the client tail. So we can see the roaming speed from AP to AP. So how much time uh, does it take to associate to the access point, to authenticate, to get his DSCP address, to default gateway, and to uh, get a response time of the DNS server. So with this, you can prove, so Wi-Fi gets always the blame. Um, when the internet connection is down, it's Wi-Fi what's not working. And with these tools, you can show them, oh, 
the internet is slow because the DNS server is not responding or it's responding very slow. And um, in this view, we have the GDPR, GDPR tools to download or to delete the client data. We have also some MSP tools in Pilot by default. So you can see, you can add um, multiple organizations and you can switch between these multiple organizations. So in this case, we have the demo environment, but you can also see my organization and you will see the dashboard for my organization and the demo organization. But you can also change it to your organization and only see that organization. So this is not a feature licensing, it's built in in the pilot version. And you can configure one organization at a time, but you can see the dashboard for all the organizations. And you can create um, different admin administrators in the different locations. And I can show you, you can even create um, admin accounts based on location so we can create a ad new admin in the organization demo and it's an operator and it's all only uh, located in the netherlands or in poland for example or we can create a monitoring account so they can see only the access points and the devices connected to the poland location so then to prove it's not only, um, so not always Wi-Fi gets the blame, we have sort of different network 360 monitoring tools. So we monitor the devices, so the access points, switches, routers connected to CloudIQ. We monitor the clients, and the clients are the clients connected to the wireless network. We monitor the Wi-Fi, the RF environment. We monitor the wired network. The services, services like the DHCP server, the DNS server, and we monitor the security in the applications. So what we can do is dive into it and we can also see it historical. So for the last week or the last day, and we can see the uh, current device hardware health. We can see the um, device configuration and firmware. Are there access points with an old firmware version or the uptime of the access points? And we can see if there are power issues. So if are there access points powered with power over Ethernet? Well, they need power over Ethernet plus, for example. And um, are there any channel change events or radar detected in the past seven days, for example? So that's the devices. We can see the clients connected, the, how many clients are connected to the network. Um, 2.4 or 5 gigahertz, what's the client score, the channel usage, um, the special streams, and the client capabilities. So are there any clients what cannot connect to a specific, specific channel, for example? So in this case, when we are using channel 144 on the APs, there is no client that can connect to the wireless network. So what type of clients are connected to the network? So we can have a, a fully blown AX network, but when we have only B or G clients, it's not making sense. So the network, we can see the multicast, broadcast, unicast traffic over the network. And also we can see, are there any X points connected uh, with half duplex and 10 MB or 100 MB, for example. So this is not, um, you can see that in one view for one AP, but you can also see it for your whole network. So when you have thousands of APs, you can see in one single view if there are access points not connecting to full duplex one gig. And we can monitor the latency to the gateway and the latency to the internet. And the services, so we see the DHCP service, the latency to DHCP server, DNS service, and the NTP. So here we can see, are there uh, any, is there any delay on the DNS server, for example? So the web page is very slow because there is some delay on the DNS server. Or the delay is changed over time. So let's see it over time.
So here we have the access points. And what we also have is some asset tracking. And um, what we can do, we can, in all the uh, access points, in the most of the access points, we have uh, Bluetooth Low Energy. And with that, we can um, scan, um, for example, um, beacons, eye beacons, to see where they are. So I have an eye beacon here. And I can see the device trial over time for the last one hour or eight hours. So let's see the last one hour. And we can see it was there on AP room 301. And um, maybe it's, it's, it's moved to AP 302, for example. Not the latest. Let's see the latest. Maybe it's eight hours. So it was there. And it is moved to that one. So we can see it over time and we can see live where it is. So we can do some asset tracking, for example, in the uh, hospital, we can see, see where are the wheelchairs, for example, with the eye beacons. So we have eye beacons from uh, Extreme, but there are also eye beacons uh, from SD mode or other vendors. It's an open standard, so you can use every eye beacon in the market. So with that, we have client 360, and we can see the um, supported mode from the clients, and we can dive into the client and see how it is connected in on which IP and what's behind the um, the uh, what's uh, how is the IP connected to the network. So are there any switches routed? You can see the status. You can see the client count. For that AP, you can see where it is located and the user. So we, one user can have more clients. In this case, it's one client. It's also active. You can see the data for that user. And last but not least, we have the retail dashboard. And this is the first vertical dashboard and we will build more dashboards. So the first is retail. And with the retail dashboard, we can see the current customers, the returning customers, um, average average shopping time, for example, or the um, multi-store customers, are there customers in more than one store? And customers that are um, not connected to the wireless. So it's, on our it's our devices with an enabled Wi-Fi. And this is for marketing. And we also have, this is for business view, we have also the IT view to see the uh, network availability, the uh, client devices, the wireless users, the top applications per uh, store, returning versus the new customers, some alarms, and the maximum client capabilities over the stores. So this is the first one. We will come with some... Um, healthcare dashboards with some education dashboards. So the first one is the retail dashboard. And um, we have some troubleshooting tools from Extreme Cloud IQ. It's not in the connect version. So all the issues on the network with authentication or association or networking are stored here. So we see, for example, an issue in, in Poland. We can click on the MAC address. And we can see the description of the issue and we can see the suggestion how to solve it. And we can take some action. So with this, we can uh, escalate this issue. We can have a comment. Um, can you please have a look? And we can send an email to one of our colleagues or someone else to have a look at this issue. And here we get an email with all the information around this issue. Another nice feature is the VLAN probe. So we can test if their VLAN is available on one of the APs. So let's see, VLAN one, we can start. So we can see if it's available and um, what the shipnet is. So when you are not, um, when you don't have um, access to the wired network, you can check if the VLANs are configured correctly on the wired switches, for example. And we have some packet capturing tools. So we can packet, the, uh, we can capture the packets from one of the APs, 
different interface and we can store it in cloud shark but we can also store it locally and we can download it to our um, laptop or pc and we can open it with wireshark so these are the, some key features of the um, extreme cloud iq we will walk to uh, later on to the uh, configuration part of private preset p for example and private client groups I will switch to my PowerPoint again. So um, we will highlight two of the key features of Extreme Cloud Thank you. Uh, I want to discuss private preset key and the private client groups. And I will show you the configuration of both. So with PPSK, um, I think you're all familiar with the WPA2 personal uh, secured network. With that you have one generic key for all of your devices and you cannot create a different policy for different devices. So one key for all the devices sharing all the same policies, the same firewalls, the same VLANs. And with PPSK, we can create a unique pre-shared key for individual or, or groups of users. So it's the perfect tool to quickly and easily um, and secure, securely onboard and manage corporate owned or guest or IoT devices. So you can create security policies per PPSK group or um, individual PPSKs, you can, um, including the VLAN assignment or the time of the day access, uh, quality of service settings, firewall settings per PPSK group. And you can revoke a single key without affecting the rest of the network. And for guests, we can create time-based keys uh, for guest access. And how can we distribute these keys? Now we can distribute it on several ways. Uh, we can create a bulk of keys and distribute it via email. Uh, we can create a self-service portal with AD integration. Um, we can, which we can also use the registration SSID. So clients can registration themselves, register themselves on the registration SSID, uh, get a key via mail or SMS or um, on screen, and they can connect to a secure PPSK SSID. So PPSK use cases, um, guest access, for example, we can onboard guest users with a unique time based credentials. So key can be valid, for example, eight hours, 24 hours, one week, and so on. It can store it in the cloud and it can store it on the devices itself, on the APs. Uh, we can onboard personal devices and BOIOD devices um, with a unique and secure credential. And especially for IoT devices, and many IoT devices only support the WPA2 personal authentication and not radius. And with PPSK, we can create a secure and unique credential for every single IoT device. So I will switch over to my Extreme Cloud IQ account. And I will configure a new PPSK network. So let's say PPSK test. We can set the maximum numbers of clients per private PPSK. I want three clients per private PCP key or one, let's say three in this case. And we can bind a PPSK to a private preset key. Uh, MAC, sorry, a MAC address to a private preset key. So in this case, when we say it's one device and we will bind the number, we will bind the MAC address to a private preset key, we know that no one else can use that PPSK key. Let's say three. And we will use a user group. And let's say this is Poland. And the, key, uh, the users in Poland will use the cloud database. 
and um, we will use some letters. We will change it to eight. The account expiration will do never expire, and we will deliver the key by email. So save. And I will change the user profile to VLAN one. And with that, we have no security firewalls or traffic tunneling or quality of service settings configured. It's only the VLAN one in this case. And I can add a user. So let's go with NM1 or NM phone. Here we see the password and we will send this key to Adam. Save the network. So we can also use some classification rules to allow only that SRD for different branches. So in this case, the SRD branch Netherlands is only available in the Netherlands and the SRD branch Poland is only available in Poland. Well, they're using the same network policy with all the same configuration. So I create a new SRD PPSK test. I create a user and now I will update, deploy it to my access points. I will do a Delta update. The difference between the Delta update and the complete update is that in the Delta update, we only do the changes. And with the complete update, we will update the complete configuration from Extreme Cloud IQ to the uh, access points. And in that case, the AP has to reboot. So what we also configured is a layer two VPN connection between Poland and the Netherlands, I can show you here. So between the Atom access points and the XR600, is the, the router is acting as a layer two VPN gateway. And we create a single uh, an, uh, um, um, VPN profile and the user profile VLAN one where I configured on that SID is tunneled back to the Netherlands. So with that, I will switch it over to Adam and he can show you the onboarding process of the PPSK. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, let me share my Outlook first, just as a proof that I got uh, an email from the account uh, Manoa created. And a minute ago, yeah, I got my password, which is in fact, which is in fact the PSK key I should use in order to access uh, to access the uh, wireless network. Yeah, so I will copy it. So let's go to my to my uh, Linux. I have Linux here installed. And with this one, I can connect to any network I want. Right now I'm connected to my home network. Okay, I have my address. Let me see. Oh, no, did you, did you create it uh, on this policy, the tunnel as well? Yes, yes. Okay. So just for proof that I'm in Poland right now, connected to my home network, okay? So let me switch to another one. I should see the PPSK test, yeah? So then I connect, I paste my uh, PSK password. Okay, let, wait a second, I'm connected. So let's check the IP address. You can see the address has been changed. So I have the different one. So most probably I'm in the Netherlands right now. So let me check. And yes, you are. Okay. 
So I'm here, yeah. Okay, so then I can go and show you how it looks like from the Cloud IQ perspective, yeah. Uh, can you see my screen on the Cloud IQ? I believe so. Yes. Okay, so this is my my device in, in Poland, which is named Aton Poland. Let me see if we have any users connected. Yeah. So we have the user connected. We can, you know, check. We can even check on the uh, on the map where the user is connected to which AP. In fact, this one, this map, I can show you on the map. In fact, it's my, you know, real home, like real plan. And this is real IP on, at my home, yeah. So then I can, I can see uh, also the heat map, yeah, and everything. So I think, uh, well, that's it as a proof that it works. And uh, well, uh, let's go to Madawa presentation again. Okay, the next topic is the private client groups. So uh, that's a unique solution from Xtreme. And with the private client groups, we can uh, deliver a unique and secure a simple way to manage micro segmentation networks for IoT, MDU, and hospitality use cases. So it enables an administrator to set up private groups of wireless and wireless cli wired clients within the same SSID and VLAN. So it creates a room area network based on micro locations, uh, location, and it enables a user to operate within a secure and private environment. So the user can access everything within their personal room area and uh, it's isolated from other networks. So we have two types of private client groups, the AP-based and the key-based. So with the AP-based, um, one to five PPSKs are bounded to our room, to our room AP, so to, the, to an access point. And um, so the in-room uh, networks are created based on the APs. When, the client, when these clients connected to um, one of the APs in the wireless network, then they form a type of private network. And when a client's client roam to a neighbor AP, it will create a geo-retunnel and send the traffic back to his home access point. So the other one is the key-based, and the uh, private client group is then not based on the AP, but on the key. So clients that share the same key will have access to each other. And we can create small private networks with, the cli with, connect with clients connected to the same SSID. And the traffic is not isolated on based on geo-returning, but based on the MAC address of connected clients. And that prevents peer-to-peer peer -peer peer communications. So use cases for private client, client groups are, for example, hotels. So in hotels, we can create a room area network for every hotel room. So one SID and one VLAN, which you can connect only to the devices in your own room, in your hotel room. So for example, when you have an Apple TV uh, or a Sonos device uh, in your hotel room, you can only see your Sonos or your Apple TV device from your own room and not the Apple TVs in the other rooms. Another example is the multi-tenant office building. So we can create one SSID with one VLAN, but every office will have their own micro segment in the network. They can only connect to devices from their own office. And we have uh, another use case is the assisted living facilities. And we create a room area network for every apartment. So we can have one single SSID and one VLAN, but you can only connect to the devices in your apartment. So you can roam to the whole building. Okay, let's have a look at the private client groups then. So private client groups are based on PPSK. So I've um, added two APs. 
So one AP room 301 and one AP room 302, both AP 150Ws. And it's an AP I can show you with um, wireless built in, but also with some switch ports. And we can um, also um, connect these switch ports, wired ports, to um, one of the private client groups. So when you are in a in the private client groups and you have a printer, for example, you can connect the printer wired to the AP uh, in, in the room and you can access that AP from your own private client groups. You need printer. Um, let's go to the users. So we have a private client group SSID. The first one is the key based and the second one is the AP based. So we have different uh, user groups. So for the clients in the Netherlands, clients in, the Pol in Poland. And in Netherlands, we have two users in Poland one. And we have different user profiles based on your location. So by default, you are in the user profile VLAN one. And when you're in the Netherlands, you are in the user profile the Netherlands. So let's look at the users then, private client groups. So we have the AP based and we bound an AP to our room and we have two uh, users in that room, room 301, and we have two users in the room 302. And we can deliver the keys by SMS or email. And we can also assign ports from one room to different users. And we have based on key based. So we have a different um, password for Johan, for Adam, and for Manoa. And in uh, this case, Johan cannot access the devices from Adam, and Adam cannot access the devices from Manoa. Well, they are connected to the same SSID and they are in the same VLAN. So let me see what happens when a client is connected to the AP. So we have a client connected to AP room 302. And let's see what, who it is. It is a client from room 301. So it's going to another uh, access point, is neighbor access point. And what we can see then, there is a GRE tunnel between these APs. So all the traffic is tunneled back to his own AP. So there is a GV tunnel from AP302 to AP301. And the client traffic is tunneled back to his own AP. So this is AP302, this is AP301. So with that, I want to summarize my presentation and I will hand it over to Adam. So when we look at Extreme Cloud IQ, it's fast. That means we are very flex flexible. You can choose for your for the public cloud solution or a private cloud solution or the local cloud the, uh, based on VMware. You can um, the APs are portable switches and routers. So you can start with a, a local cloud solution and when the requirements uh, are changed, you can move to the public cloud. We are agile, we have the machine learning capabilities like Client 360, Network 360. Um, we are secure uh, based on PPSK, private client groups. We have the ISO uh, certification. Um, we have the cloud management NAC A3, what we didn't discuss this session, but maybe a session later. And um, I, with that, I will um, hand it over to Adam. We will discuss the onboarding process of the Excels and the Wing devices and uh, how to register your own XIQ account. And with that, you can start, for example, with Connect and um, test um, the connection uh, with your Wing or your Exos devices. Okay, thanks. 
Uh, by the way, about the uh, about the small um, comment about the tunneling thing, most probably most probably many of you um, have heard about our new uh, kit for the teleworkers. So it should be we will we will run another session only for for that one for the teleworking and the SD one. So stay tuned. So just for the reminder, okay. So um, let me share my screen then. I hope that right now it could it would be better than the previous one. I hope it, it is readable properly. Okay, so uh, let me talk a minute about uh, Cloud IQ with Extreme Legacy Equipment. And I will start from the Exos part. So for many of our customers who uh, are kind of legacy customers, uh, I mean, they are using our gear from the times from the from before Aerohype acquisition, acquisition uh, we, we've been asked many times about the the um, possibility or how we can um, uh, how the extreme will go with the Cloudify uh, story with the Exos Wing and Voss and everything. Yeah, so I think it could be an answer to that. Okay, so. As long as we are the technical community, let's stick to technical things. So this is the idea how it should work and how it works in fact right now. Uh, on the left side, you have the HiveOS, which is kind of uh, original uh, HiveOS, like uh, um, AP from AeroHive. Yeah, uh, they are working that way. That I that they are using WebCup server and WebCup uh, for the communication to the cloud. And uh, we have also Wing connector, which I will talk about later. And we have the the bunch of switches. I would say the the family of switches. We have uh, Exos, Voss, and FastPath even. Right now we been we will be talking about the Exos, and what about it? Yeah. So just to go down to the Rabbit MQ hole because you can see that the the engine on the cloud level is the Rabbit MQ. So just down to the Rabbit hole, uh, the switches are using the special code for the communication with the cloud, which is called IQ agent IQ agent. The IQ agent is uh, like connects to the um, to the cloud through HTTPS. This is normal HTTPS connection, and uh, the data are sampled and sent to the cloud in some different intervals. Yeah, so you should expect some delay, but it's, I think it's kind of normal thing when you have the cloud deployment that you. Uh, but but at least it, it is it is fast you know I can we will see it in a minute I believe because you know the intention is to show all of you the process of onboarding the Exo switch to the cloud from the scratch so stay tuned okay so the switch is connecting to HAC Extreme Cloud IQ com this this um, this uh, address FQDN. So you, you should have it in mind because you have to have a switch configured properly uh, in order for the switch to connect to internet and use the DNS properly and everything. Yeah. So it should be, uh, should at least have the possibility to go outside through the internet. This is kind of obvious, but um, of course to do so, you have to have some, uh, special or maybe not special some uh, particular number uh, like the version of the exos okay okay so it, but before we go that way i for the reminder this there are different images for different switches and you can you can uh, see it on the slide and always use the proper image for your device okay do not try to install the only image on the summit summit X, for example, or vice versa. Of course, the switch should take care of your fault, but uh, well, that's it's better not to do so. Okay. 
And of course, if you just upgrade, upgrade the, the, the code on the switch, you should, and you have to reboot it, okay? So back to the Exos version. So Exos 30.1 is the minimal supported release for the Cloud IQ connect, connectivity, but if possible, use 30.5. Why? Because 30.5 and above uh, have the Cloud Connector uh, X mod, which is the you know kind of code uh, installed already, so bundled in the image. If you have 30.1, for example, you have to uh, add the X mod to the switch. Okay. Uh, nice thing, of, of, of course, about the X mod is that it does not require a reboot. If you would like to just upgrade the X mode, then you can do it, you know, without the reboot. Okay. So uh, for the for the version prior to 30.5, you should download the uh, X mod. You have here for the reference uh, the example command for it, okay? And you should create manually start the IQ agent process. This is for the implementations. I think we have uh, well the most most of them, I believe. So we are we have the installation which are uh, which are um, you know already in place, and we would like to connect them to the Cloud IQ, okay? So in this way, when you have this kind of thing, you have to run the IQ agent manually, like this create process and start the process from the command line. But if you have the green field, you can use, of course, the ZTP process as well, okay? But I would not like to um, elaborate about it, but it is also included in ZTP, okay? Before you can um, upgrade your IQ agent, for example, if you have the new version, of course, you will have to terminate the process and delete the process be before the upgrade, okay? Uh, for the reference oh, uh, as well, we have some, some command lines to, for you to, do so, to, to use them uh, for, for some troubleshooting. And yeah, this is also really, uh, really nice to know that we can go to shell and see the um, log, okay? So um, let me go then to, to the Exos and the cloud, okay? Here I have the, 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 the cloud IQ. Let's go to the devices. Let me see the devices. We don't have any Exos here, okay? So let me um, do so. Okay. So in our lab in Warsaw, we most probably for the people uh, who attended the last session, like a week ago, uh, they most probably have seen this picture. This is our lab in Warsaw. So let me configure the X440 switch for the uh, Cloud IQ access. Okay, so I will go to my uh, command. Wait a second. Okay, I have the command already prepared just to make it quicker. Okay, so that's it. Show version. We have to uh, check the version uh, because, well, it's a serial number here. And of course we have to check that this is the proper version. I, right now I'm, I, I'm running the, the latest and greatest Exos version, which is uh, available, avail available, sorry, mm -hmm. on the download uh, section of our website. Okay, so that's it. The, the, the switch has a new um, Exos and everything I need to do, it's, to put the command, okay? Create the process IQ agent and so on, okay? It creates the process and show process uh, cloud IQ, I uh, sorry, IQ agent, okay? It's ready and it's ready to run on the cloud. So let me copy and paste 
the serial number, okay? I should go here to the devices menu, click add, quick add devices. Then I should choose which kind of device it is. It is Exos. So, okay, I will put Exos add device, okay? It will show up. It takes some time, well, to uh, communicate to the cloud. It shouldn't be so, uh, so uh, long. I don't know if it's, uh, well, it is something, yeah, something is, comes up, yeah. We have the serial number, we have the model of the switch. When I refresh again, most probably it will see, it will show us that it is connected properly. Let me then go dig into the switch, okay? So you have the icon of the switch, yeah, here. Uh, you have some statuses on the ports, yeah, the packet numbers, you know, of course, the switch is uh, connected, you know, just right now. So, well, we will not see much of the um, statistics here, but well, we can, we can see the clients, the MAC addresses and so on, the VLAN numbers, yeah. So, this is the basic stuff. But well, uh, what, I'm, what I mean by that, the thing is that right now it is possible to monitor the switch at this stage of the Cloud IQ code, okay? So in the future, of course, it would be and will be possible to configure the switch itself from the cloud, but you know, the work is still going on and uh, just stay tuned for the next version of Cloud IQ and most probably we will get some additional things. Not only the monitoring, but right now we have only monitoring. If you, uh, well, would like to configure something that you should, well, go to the CLI, okay? So this is about a switch. So switch appears and yeah, we can, we can do it. Uh, we can do some monitoring. And okay, so um, let's go back to uh, this another point. Okay, so let's go back to my, yeah, and uh, most probably you can see the poll right now. So the question, so the question is what is the, what type of communication switch uses in order to connect to the cloud? So please take your time and click on answer, okay? And, okay, let's go to VOS, okay? And because uh, I have to mention that VOS, yes, it is as well on the roadmap uh, to include the, uh, the VOS inside the Cloud IQ. Uh, right now it's working, yeah. But right now it's uh, it's available only as a demo feature, feature, and it is um, well, it is possible to 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 onboard the switch, the VOS switch in the cloud, but only if you have the version 8.1.1 at minimum, minimal VOS version, and it is supported right now only on three platforms, yeah. You can see these platforms on the slide. This is the VSP 4900, 7400 and XA, which is, you know, extreme uh, uh, access platform. This is the small VSP for the branch offices, okay? The configuration is so simple as most probably everything in our fabric. I really uh, encourage you to to check what it is and to join my next session uh, next week about the fabric. But the fabric itself is really simple. So the Cloud IQ configuration is also simple. So it, it requires only to run, uh, to enable Cloud IQ uh, uh, agent and that's it, okay? Sorry, I cannot show you that this because I don't have such equipment on my lap, okay? So let's go to Wing S then. On WingOS, we have different 
thing, okay? So the Wink OS is using different way of communicating with the cloud. And as it was with the Wink and uh, for example, Extreme Cloud Appliance, which is known product for, for, most, for many of you, I believe. So the Wink OS is using um, the Nsight connector, so Nsight API, yeah? So it look uh, so it works the, the same. Yeah. If you would ask what are the version of the AP supported in the Cloud IQ, this is quite nice chart for you, for your reference. Uh, as you can see, there are so many um, APs, even old ones, which will be somehow supported. Okay, in the cloud. But of course, well, it's not, uh, this is not, uh, I would not like to stop you from upgrading, of course, because you know, if you have really, really old equipment, you should upgrade because we have the new standards on the, on the wireless and so on. So please do so. But if you would like to use it or even test it, then know that you can, um, you can use it. Uh, the same with the, um, with the controllers, yeah? So if you have VX, for example, on almost every, on each and every supported uh, code, Wink OS, you, you have full, full support, okay? The, how to onboard the Wink AP or Wink OS in general, yeah? Of course, you, can, you, sh you have to have uh, the Wink OS properly configured with IP, with the internet access and so on and uh, also the DNS. And it's normal, normal configuration as it was for the, I don't know, original Nsight or XCA, okay? So you just create the Nsight policy and just assign the Nsight policy to the Arab domain you want to have visible on the cloud, okay? But this is, there is some kind of trick you have to have in mind, for example, this one. This is our RDC, which is the reg regional data center. If you go to your account, you, if you register on the Cloud IQ and you go to your account, you will see on the URL some, you, 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 you will see some URL, yeah? So the first letters before the dot are the RDC name, okay? So you should put the RDC with dash wing extreme cloud IQ com as in the configuration, yeah? For example, Example from the uh, from the picture above, e, ie dash wing extreme cloud IQ com. Okay, this is easy. Okay, then you can you should go to the of course to the dashboard and add the devices. I will show you. You should put the wing serial number and MAC address, and you are done. Okay, so let's go quickly to the demo, and I need to change it. Here, um, just for the um, for make it more interesting. Interesting. I have uh, um, Wink APs and Wink environment uh, run in my home as well, so it would be well easier for me to show it in my home. Well, we I I believe we all need to stay at home uh, from well from some time. So let's go and show some version. Uh, you need those two numbers, so the MAC address and serial number. So let's let me configure it from the scratch. Okay. Uh, Nsight policy. Let's name it X. Uh, let's name it XIQ. Uh, uh, it was I E, I -E Wink. Uh, extreme cloud IQ. Come, let me check if I did not do any error. Okay. Oh, sorry. Of course, my bad.
HTTPS, okay? So I have it already configured, but I have to put it on into my domains. So let me jump out from here and then go with the domain. RF domain on default, use inside policy XIQ, exit. I have additional domain, of course, for the, uh, for the uh, access points which is called Brotov, my home, and use inside policy XIQ. Commit right, okay? Let me go and do some show version. I have it here, like, let me, the serial number. Let me switch to browser, okay? So add quick add device, wink, just paste serial number, then a MAC address, I will copy and paste, but you have to stick to the format without dashes. And what I'm doing here, I'm adding a wink uh, OS on the VX, on the controller, okay? So let me, let me check what will happen, okay? So you can see, that I added my VX, which is here, but as well, both of APs connected to the VX at my home uh, are visible, yeah, already. So it's, I think it's really, really nice thing. What should I do then with that? Okay, let me do some action and assign location, for example. I can, ch I can check my, uh, map at in the proper place yeah this is the real one okay in fact you can of course see that some clients are connected here yeah uh, including my laptop uh, this is my laptop from this laptop i'm doing the broadcast right now yeah so you can see it's connected to the wing yeah, you can, you can then go to, as well, to the Network 360. Yeah, you have the information on the map. You can see the coverage. Well, it's not show for the, for, it should refresh. Yeah, the AP office room, for example, it's, I don't know, it takes some time, I believe. But what can you do? But I don't know if most probably Manoa well, didn't show it, but uh, here you can see that I have some problems in my home, maybe. So I can add here some simulated AP, yeah? So I can plan my devices. I can uh, use the devices and add it as the simulated AP, yeah? And if I, if I would add it, I will see the, the coverage, I would say the simulation of the coverage. But well, it's not about that thing, but it's really nice to know it. Yeah, I have immediately, I, have, I, I can have uh, the clients here connected, yeah. Yeah, we have the clients connected to the wireless and to the, to the wired network as well, yeah. Uh, what else can we see on the wing? Let me go to some access point. As you might see, this access point is kind of, well, not old, but well, not, not the latest. I, yeah, so it's supported. Yeah, so we have some information about the, uh, the clients here and so on, system information, but still, the same apply the same as it was with the exos it applies as well to the exo to the wing so wing side so we can monitor the devices and monitor the network the wireless and everything but we cannot configure yet yeah but it will be in in some time yeah so please stay tuned okay so that's about it about uh, the about the um, integration with the legacy uh, devices. 
So let's go to the, uh, well, less technical things. So for everybody who needs to and wants to uh, connect, uh, so use the Cloud IQ or, or try, you can use it uh, free of charge. So this is totally free to, to create your account on the Cloud IQ and to play with it, yeah? It does not require the pilot license to, to play with the wing and, and so on, okay? So you can, you can do it even on the connect uh, thing. So you should just go to extremecloud.iq.com, that's easy, and click uh, register, okay? It's easy, just fill up the, 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 the fields, click register, and that's it, yeah? You will get some information that, well, the welcome note that you are registered on the cloud. And from now on, you can, uh, you can use it. Yeah, of course, if you go then, uh, you, should, uh, you, you should set up your password. Yeah. And well, that's it. Yeah. So, but this is quite important slide. Okay. You can go with 30 day trial uh, just after your registration. The trial, 30 day trial, will enable all the fancy stuff on the Cloud IQ, which means the pilot version of the Cloud IQ, but it will not allow, allow you to go back to the connect version, yeah? So I would suggest just for the play, yeah? that you would start from Hive Manager Connect, which is on the bottom, okay? So just start with the Hive Manager Connect, play some, you know, sometime, uh, get familiar with the platform, and then if you would like to test your, you know, uh, some, some, some fancy stuff and PPSK and PCGs and this kind of stuff, you can switch to the uh, trial, to the 30-day trial, but please keep in mind that it is not possible to go back to connect. If you would like, would like to go back to connect, you have to create additional account, yeah? And not go with the trial, so. And last but not least, we have the free, free training for everybody who registers on the website. If you go to Extreme Networks dot com slash remote and go some um to the well i don't believe it's bottom yeah it's kind of bottom on the on the on the web page you might you might see the free virtual technical certification training av available for you so just register this is the self-paced video training it would take you like six hours or more even to do through, through all the video uh, um, videos on the, on the training. I, I strongly encourage you to do so because there are, there are not only the knowledge about the XIQ, but general wireless knowledge. It is really nice from this perspective as well to, for you to understand how the wireless works because we noticed that even uh, people who, test, who claimed that they were, you know, uh, the wireless engineers, they don't know in some times that how it, how it works really. So I highly encourage you to do the training. This training is certified, yeah, and it's free, okay? And you will get some uh, diploma. Okay, so uh, we have used almost all time, or I don't know if we have a hat or because I believe it should. Yeah, Adam, I, I just wanted to uh, say a few words, final words. Okay, uh, so thank you from my side. Yeah, thank you, Adam. Um, thank you, Manoa. Let me just quickly, as always, um, do the closing. So, uh, guys, we have had a lot of questions, and I think that we were able to answer almost all of them. I think that there are just uh, maybe three or four left. 
So probably they will be answered while I'm talking, or if we still have any questions pending at the end of the session, we'll send you uh, a full Q&A report along with the slides and along with the link to the recording of the session. So basically this concludes our second session, which was dedicated to the Extreme Cloud IQ. Um, and um, you hopefully have seen and understood uh, that a lot of new features are um, well implemented into Extreme Cloud IQ and a lot of new features are coming in the nearest future. Um, from my side, I would like to add that um, the whole company is um, investing a lot of resources right now to get all the portfolio, all the pieces of portfolio um, integrated into the Extreme Cloud IQ. And uh, I hope you know, that some beats and uh, pieces that we have shown today um, kind of um, justify that. Uh, the next session, which is going to be next Thursday, the same time, 10 a.m. Central European time, is going to be about Extreme Fabric Connect. Uh, so for those of you who are familiar with the uh, with that flagship um, network technology, network architecture that we are offering, um, this is going to be really interesting because uh, this time we will be focusing on some advanced use cases. For those of you folks who are not that familiar with Fabric Connect and what that is, how it works, how it operates, it would be um, also useful to get connected to the session because anyway, some of the basics and some of the concepts will be mentioned. Um, and anyway, you will see the power of this offering of the Fabric Networks themselves and the power of the Extreme Fabric Connect offering and what nice things and what really, really complex problems we can solve uh, with the help of that solution. Another thing, just the last one, um, we have a very nice set of uh, websites. So basically you are all aware that we have extremenetworks.com, our corporate um, global website where all the information is published. And uh, besides that, we also have some localized um, uh, mini websites. Okay, so, so the, the first one is um, EEN, uh, .extremenetworks.com, EEN stands for Eastern Europe and Nordics. Um, it's in English, but the difference between this site and the global one is that we are focusing on some local, um, local events uh, specific to the region of Northern and Eastern Europe, um, on some local insights, on some local interviews with local people, on local cases, projects, and uh, references that we see here um, in the region. Um, along with that, we do have um, several localized mini websites as well. One of them is completely in Russian, so you can see that the bottom of this slide. So either you just go ru.extremenetworks.com or simply uh, use the more common uh, address, which is extremenetworks.ru, and you get to the same web page, but it's totally localized. It's all in English. Oh, sorry, <laughs> it's all in Russian, of course. And um, there is a bunch of nice interviews, a bunch of nice uh, news and stories. So I totally recommend you to go and take a look at that. And the same concept uh, we have implemented in the um, Polish language. So it's pl.extremenetworks.com. And it's worth mentioning that we are continuing um, to develop that. And uh, soon we will see the Dutch version of the um, same mini website, which will go to NL dot extreme networks dot com. Um, that's it from my side. Thank you very much, folks, for staying uh, that long with us. I hope that this investment of your time will be absolutely useful. And stay tuned. See you next week and be safe. Bye bye. Thank you.